but I was We've been working on this mixed media color study for the past four weeks, and we have done so much work. Today, I'm going to cover what to do with the papers that we made artistically and what to do with them practically. I'm going to share a couple of specific techniques that I use to uh, take these papers and put them into practice, as well as sharing my best cataloging techniques. So after you've done all this work, you have a great way of maintaining it and keeping it for the life of your creative career. I'm also going to share why this exercise matters so much and why it's important to your creative process. I'm here live today, so go ahead and ask me questions in the chat. And if you're watching the replay, put the questions in the comments. I'm Jackie Bernardi, and welcome to my studio. Uh, these four weeks have been a whirlwind of using the same four colors plus white to make a variety of painted papers that can be used in our art practice. So I chose to use primary magenta, Tains gray, sap green, Naples yellow, and white for tinting. Now, I've never used this color combination together intentionally before, and I just wanted to see what was possible. So what I did over the four weeks was create different ways to explore the colors. Having done that, now I'm ready to actually use them in some visual reference pieces that I'm going to be creating today. I'm not creating art for art's sake. What I am doing is creating artistic elements for visual reference later. The first way I'm going to do this today is to create a grid collage. Today's grid is not necessarily going to be a work of art, but what it is going to be is taking the papers that we created and creating a visual field for reference later. What I mean is it puts into shape and form the combination of these different colors and the blending of the different colors as they were on the papers as we created them. Now, if that sounds confusing, don't worry, stick with me. What I'm doing here is using a piece of cardstock to create a template made out of post-it notes. So these were three inch by three inch squares that I cut out into the cardstock so that I would always have an easy template to create the grids for a grid collage. This works really well for color study. And what I'm doing now is labeling the bottom of the grid with the colors that were used in it and the date. And I just always put the date on my color studies uh, so I can actually, if they get separated somehow, I can piece them back together. So just grabbing a couple of items out of my collage box, just uh, some hole punches, some scissors, a pencil, just the things that I need. I've already gathered about nine, nine pieces of paper that came out of this color study, different styles, different techniques, and pulled them together. And these are the only papers that I'm going to use in this particular grid style. This helps me keep organized, but still gives me the benefit of looking at the color study as a whole. I'm also going to put out some of the paint colors. Actually, I'm going to put out all of the paint colors just in case I want to introduce some paint into the grid collage, which there's no rules for these. You can do whatever you like. You want to create something that is aesthetically pleasing, but more importantly, you want to create a blend of all the colors so that it can inspire you later for other works of art. I've also added here some matte medium from Liquitex to glue down the papers. I also have Yes Paste um, that I will probably be using. And I'm just going to get started. Now, the most important thing about this particular style of grid collage is don't overthink it. Just get the papers down. 
So when I pulled these papers to use for the grid collage, I wanted to make sure that I had some solids. I wanted to make sure I had some patterns, some gel plates, some tissue, some painted papers, and so on. Just a variety, knowing that all of the colors that I have were used in this color study, so they work. The other thing is I always keep the original color blending reference close by so I can have that as a visual cue. So I'm just using some matte medium here to paste down uh, this piece of primary magenta uh, paper that was painted over an old uh, notebook paper of mine. So you can see underneath there's some handwriting there. Just adds vis visual interest in history. You use the catalyst wedge to smooth out any air bubbles and make sure everything adheres really well. And this here was a piece of uh, newsprint that was pulled from the jelly plate and I'm going to throw this in. Uh, like I said, you don't want to overthink this grid collage and I seem to be doing a little bit of that here, but I'm also really aware that I'm filming this for you all at the same moment. So. I'm, ta I'm taking a little bit longer than I ordinarily would on my own because I want this to be valuable to you, but also visually interesting. And what I would encourage you to do with the grid style color study, this is still part of the color study. It, we're not done yet. I mean, this putting it into artistic form helps inform the oh no all right so what happened here is uh the pen ink on that piece on the back of the note paper that i glued on earlier it actually picked up the ink so we've got this bluish gray um there i'm gonna have to cover that up entirely because that color is not part of the color of this study but anyway, uh, this is still part of the color study. It's not just an end product. This is going to inform you later on. I'm just ripping this piece and you may just look at this as simple ripping of paper, but as we continue on with the color study and you use all these techniques that you use in art, whether it's ripping paper, cutting, or wetting down the paper before you glue it onto collage so that it bubbles less, all of these are expressions of technique and skills, actual skills that you develop as you create your art, whether it's a color study, whether it is a piece of art on canvas that you're working on. There are actual skills that get developed. And especially when you're a new artist, learning these skills and developing these skills through simple things like a color study is a wonderful way to build your confidence as an artist. Now, as you can see, I've added uh, some woody pencil, which is the water soluble crayon. And just for visual interest, this sheet of paper we painted on the second part of the series on the day that we did painting paper. And this is actually a sheet of round printer labels that I printed over 
and I hand drew just squiggles and, and letters, just mark making in general. And now that I've pulled off one of the labels and put it into this collage, I think it looks really cool. It adds a really different element. And using that Naples yellow, there was also a little bit of the sap green on that same paper, so it adds some variety. And I'm also uh, adding some dots that were created just from using a hole punch in the paper. You don't have to create big things here. And this is what I love about doing the grid collage, particularly for color study, because you can just go nuts and create really different type pieces to blend and showcase all the colors of the study. Now, right now you may be looking at this and you're like, you haven't even barely touched the surface. You're right. But spoiler alert, it's coming. And when you see it, it's exciting. Now, ordinarily, when I am working on a grid collage, whether it's a color study or just for fun and exercise or creative expression, I guess, um, normally I'm working on several grids at once, meaning in this, on this sheet, I have six, six squares. Normally I'm working on more than one square at one time. I just wanted to show you the first square as a quote unquote complete look before I moved on because I didn't want this to become confusing. It's a very basic exercise. And I just wanted to see, wanted you to see one square in full before I started going all over the place, which I'm about to do now. What you will see is I'm going to try things. I'm going to stop and think. I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to take things that I've already positioned with glue and move them to other places. This is just part of the process. And going back to the concept of developing confidence as an artist, it's really important when you're doing an exercise like this to explore and make mistakes and change your mind and then regret decisions or be happy with decisions, but it's all part of the process. All right, as you can see, I've started a second square and I smudged some paint around just as a base, just to see what that would be like. I tore up a piece of that purpley paper that we painted on the first day. And now I'm adding some more of that yellow green uh, jelly plate paper to be sure I have no intended destination for this square or any other at this point, other than to get all of the colors in there one way or another. When you're creating a grid collage for the purpose of a color study, the last thing you want to worry about is perfection. Perfect sizes, perfect cuts, perfect, perfect anything, really. Having said that, learning how to cut, learning how to measure visually is an important skill set. And creating grid collage, creating little pieces like this, creating pieces where there is no attachment to the outcome is where you learn and improve those skills. And the better you get at those skills as you go, the better your art becomes, no matter what type of artist you are. For example, we're not doing it here, but a, a genuinely great exercise to do to improve skills is to precision cut paper 
or to draw an entire page of circles and trying to improve your circles each time or squares or whatever. It develops spatial awareness. It develops hand eye coordination. Here I'm, I'm cutting. I'm doing a lot of cutting. Uh, cutting matters in your art practice, especially if you're going to be doing collage. Knowing how to tear paper matters, right? And every type of paper tears differently. So great idea to do grid collage to practice that. Very few people are born an artist, right? Most of us, their skills development that's required along the way. And these exercises are fantastic opportunities to develop those skills. So I'm just going to cut this piece. I've been trying to work this piece into this grid <laughs> for more than a minute. And I keep going back to the, um, the whole punched paper. Actually, this is a, a great moment to explain the rules that I set up for myself for this particular grid collage. And I do recommend, particularly with a color study, that you create some rules. So one of the rules that I made was I was only going to use these, I think it's nine sheets, it's nine or 13 sheets of paper that I'm using here. So I was only going to use elements from the pages that I have right here. I was going to allow myself to be able to use the paint colors in actual paint form. I allowed myself the opportunity to use a black or white Woody Stabilo water soluble crayon if I wanted to. And I, and one of the rules was um, I was going to carry over design elements into each and every one of the pieces, similar design elements into every piece. So what you're seeing with the hole punch circles and also the negative space hole punch items, you'll see them in just about every grid when this is done because that is a theme that's running through the entire color grid page here. It creates continuity between the different grid squares and again it's a great exercise in learning about continuity and how to bring things together in any given piece of artwork. Similar but different. This poor piece of paper right here. I have worked so hard to work this into the grid collage. And that's okay. You can do that, right? You can cut a piece first and you think it's going to go into your collage and then it doesn't end up going until the very last thing. It's okay. Again, experiment, experiment, experiment. And a lot of what I'm doing is complete intuition here. I mean, yes, I set up rules for what I would allow in the grid collage and what I wouldn't. And that was just, we created over 100 pieces of paper in this series. Couldn't use all of the paper in today's video. Believe me, though, I'm going to be using it a lot in upcoming videos, but I couldn't use it all today. So I created the rules. But like here, creating this bluish, like federal bluish type color paint. That was just intuition. It wasn't because I was lacking anything that I could put in the grid. It's just my creative mind said, all right, let's throw in some paint here. I feel like throwing in some paint and just going with it. Learning to trust your instincts is a hallmark of creativity and growing as an artist. And there's no safer place to do that than in your own art journals, in your own color studies, in your own grid collage. It's a safe place. 
You don't ever have to share this with anybody unless you're me and you're sharing it with everybody on YouTube. Okay, this is interesting. This piece of green that I am using in here is actually from a sheet of offload paper from the Brer when I was doing the jelly printing. And there's enough variation in the green and actually it was mixed with Naples yellow. There's enough variation there that even though it's just roll off paper, it creates a really nice element for this grid collage. So this is the Yes paste that I'm using. And early on in creating this grid collage, I switched primarily over to the Yes paste for gluing down the pieces of paper as opposed to the matte medium. And the reason why I made that decision was again, everything informs everything else when you do these kinds of exercises. So I used the matte medium initially, and I found that this cardstock that I'm working on, so where I drew the grid squares, that's on a piece of just cardstock, but it was kind of bubbling a little oddly. The, the paper itself was bubbling with the matte medium on it. Um, I did not gesso this paper before I used it, so it was accepting the water from the matte medium it was accepting it differently than what I really wanted. So what you're seeing now with the palette knife is I am just using the Yes paste because it's a great paste. It's pretty fast driving, all drying, excuse me, but you do have time. You do have some workability time in it. As you can see with these little dots that I'm putting in, I put them on and I'm like, oh no, the balance isn't right. And then I'm reposition them a little and so on. Okay, uh, I had a technical problem here. Uh, I got a phone call from a family member and there was a bit of an emergency. And while I was talking to them on the phone, I kept working. However, the camera quit. So now we're about, I'd say, 10 minutes ahead. And I do apologize, as you can see that bottom, uh, the bottom square on the right hand side, the one closest to my hand right now, uh, I completed that and you didn't get to see what I did there. And I do apologize, but I think based on everything you've seen so far, you can kind of gather what I did there. And all I did was use the same papers that I've been using all along, just use them a little bit differently. Okay. I do apologize for that break in the camera footage. For some reason, I really know I want to use that purple circle, <laughs> yet I can't really seem to find the best place for it. So uh, I'm, I'm just using what I have there and I, what I was feeling in the moment creating this was that I felt like I was creating some kind of vine or flower based off of the red line that came from the gel plate that was on the uh, bottom piece of paper in that particular square. And going with that vine-like thing, I thought, oh, I'll add some of these hole punch dots because I'm really having a lot of fun with hole punch dots today, as you can see. So this, this little grid at this moment is turning out to be a little bit more representational than I would normally do, but I'm okay with that. It's all part of the process. And again, bringing over this, um, the whole punch negative space. I just love this. 
And uh, I do love this anyway, even outside of this particular exercise. I enjoy curvilinear shapes and repeating curvilinear shapes. And in a lot of my art pieces, you'll find that type of element. And so this is a way that I can do it in this scale, in a three inch by three inch scale. I can just use a hole punch and it makes me very happy. That piece that I just put down with the, all the colors on it, that actually came for one of the painted papers that I had was a relief that was taken from the, the gel plate palette, right? So I put a sheet of paper at the end of the day on top and I pulled the print. And so for that quote unquote flower that I'm creating right now, that colorful piece really came from the gel plate as a palette. It's fun, right? Now, if you're enjoying what we're doing here, uh, go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you can get notified the next time I release a video. All right, I'm just finishing up this grid here. I like it a lot. I think this is a great visual reference for the color study. If you kind of compare it to the color study in the notebook, what you'll see is this grid is that page in the, in the color study book put to work. Right, so is it crazy pants? Yes, it's crazy pants, but I love it as a visual reference. And what I'll do with this piece now is put it in a three hole punch and then put it in a three ring binder where I keep a lot of my grid color studies. Okay, this sheet here was the piece of paper that I painted in part two of this color study. What I'm doing is I am just taking a, a pencil on the back side of the paper and just drawing sort of like stone shapes is what I'm going to call it. And then I'm going to cut these out. Now I'm doing this on the back of the paper because I want to be surprised by what colors come up in any given cutout. So this is sort of like a blind color study. I know that everything's going to work together because I've already proven that throughout the rest of the color study. And now is just another way to pull all of this together visually for reference later, right? And so the whole way that I'm doing this is going to be different and unique. And I have to say, I think that's probably one of the main points that I want to get across in this deep dive color study. And that is for your art to grow, I really encourage you to try things that, that you think might not work because you will largely be surprised. And that's the whole process. It's the learning, it's the experimenting, it's the failing, and then trying again something different. Alrighty, I'm going to drop in some music here uh, to make this little sped up portion go more quickly and then I'm going to show you what's up next.
All right, so I've cut out just about as many pieces as I'm looking to cut out at this point. And I have now this beautiful, what I'm gonna call negative space cutout piece of the color study. And I could use that on the base of a canvas uh, or in some type of encaustic painting maybe. Uh, there's a lot of shape there and color and that's pretty cool as being left over. So here I'm just cleaning up the shape of the stones a little bit. I don't really want anything pointy. Again, keeping that curvilinear theme that I seem to be on today. And this here is just a sheet of white roll paper. This is cheap. I've got this on Amazon. Uh, this is exactly the type of paper that you'd use on a child's easel. There's nothing special about the paper. Um, it's the right width, and I like that I can make the sheet any length I want. And I'm just going to hold that down with something so it doesn't roll up on me. There's a specific reason why I'm using this paper, and we'll get to that in a minute. But in the meantime, what I'm going to start doing is taking a look at the shapes that I just cut out. And remember, I cut them out blind, so I really don't know exactly which colors got on which stone, and it doesn't matter. It's just a combination of all the colors we created over the past four weeks. And now they're just cut into a shape. You may recall earlier I said, try not to overthink when you're creating a, uh, a little grid color study, right? Don't overthink it. And I'm saying that to myself here as well, because as I'm stacking these quote unquote stones, I don't want to overthink the colors that are next to each other or the position of the shapes. It, it truly doesn't matter. The point is just to get them all on the paper so that I can put this up on a wall someday and say, gosh, I really love the salmon that came out of that color study or the lime green or whatever it is. This is, again, just another way for you to be able to make reference to work that you've done in the past for work that you'll do in the future. Now, one thing I did notice when I was doing this was that I didn't have very much of the deep purpley color that we created during the study. So I went ahead and grabbed uh, one of the painted paper sheets and just cut out a couple pieces to add in here so I'd have more contrast balance in this uh, color reference. I am being a little fussy here. You don't need to be. Um, again, I'm conscious that I'm filming this and that you're watching it, so I'm being maybe a little more careful. But at this point, I am pretty happy with these stacked stones and the color combinations and the, just the feel of it. And I wish there was something more qualitative or quantitative about that statement. It's just, it feels right to me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue these down with the Yes Paste. And this is going to take a while, so I'm going to speed up this process also. <laughs> And as I'm finishing up the layout of these stones, I've added a couple pieces of other sheets that I had not cut out of the, the big giant sheet. 
And that was, again, to adjust colors that were created that weren't really showing up in these stones. And so as I'm finishing up, one of the things that I want to do is keep some of these scraps that I created by cutting out these shapes. Uh, you never know <laughs> when you're going to need just that little bit of mm, that can only come from a small scrap from something else that you worked on. If you've ever done any collage, you know this is true. Except for maybe the tiniest of scraps, I'm going to keep these. I mean, look at this. It's so delicate. It could be used in a painting just for that little pop of something. I mean, that's, that's pretty great. So again, I'm going to keep these. And I choose to keep them in a manila envelope. And I'm going to show you my process for doing that. It's not just putting the scraps in the envelope and saying, OK, these are scraps from this color study. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label it, but I'm also going to do something unique so that I, I always know what scraps are in any given envelope. I, I'm showing you the clear piece of uh, Ziploc over there, single use plastic. I don't, I try not to use that anymore. Um, and you know, I'm not perfect. I fail sometimes, but I just wanted to put that there because I just wanted to, that would be the alternative to what I'm doing here. And it would be a way for you to see the scraps that you have. So as you can see on the envelope, I'm just labeling it that it's scraps and it's the color study with the colors that we used in it, just written down. But then I take a pant hanger and a piece of the paper that we created that's representative of all the colors in the study. And so this happened to be a gel plate pole, and I think it represents all the colors pretty well. And I am just going to attach it to the back of the manila envelope with the hanger. And then I have a hanging pole where I keep works that are drying, uh, where I keep my scraps from color studies and other pieces of art. Um, and this way, I can just scroll through the hangers and see what colors I want to work with or what color scraps I have to work with. So this is another way to catalog the color study. Right? So that was the scraps. Now we have this piece here. This is not a piece of art. This is a reference page. And I really want you to think of it this way. It's just a page for reference. So again, I'm going to label it. You may think I'm label crazy, but I promise you in three weeks time, I will never remember what colors I used in this study. All I'm saying is you move on in your art, you move on in your creativity, and then you kind of forget things. So recording it, is really important. So again, the date, the colors I used, and so on. Now I did that at the top of this paper because what I'm going to do now is roll it up and that's why I use the roll paper. It makes it really easy. I'm rolling it up and then once it's fully rolled, I can put a rubber band around it. I could put a paper clip on it. I could hang it from a hanger if I wanted, but at the top, it's clearly labeled what paints were used, and then you can also see the first row of stones. That's why I do this cataloging in this way. If I'm considering doing a painting and I'm thinking about maybe using these colors, I can unroll that scroll that you just saw, and it gives me a whole story of what's going on with the painting. All right, so we are now wrapping up this color series, and I'm so grateful that you were here for it. If you only saw one episode of it or if you watched all of it, uh, I just wanted to expose you to a different way to approach the process of your art, and I hope this helped. I will continue to be on for the next five minutes. So if you have any questions, please be sure to ask in the chat. If you're watching the replay, you can always ask your questions in the comments. And I promise to answer as quickly as possible. Thank you.